Hi everyone! So a couple of months ago I made a video about the fact that I was worried I might have to go to court because there was a client that owed the small business that Leslie and I run almost £2,000 and had just decided not to pay us. Today I want to fill you in on how that situation has panned out. Spoiler alert, it's not a happy ending. So, in case you missed the last video about this, this particular guy had taken on Little Bird Creative to design him a logo and design and build a website and set up social media channels and create regular content for those social media channels. This was all for his brand new business, which he was going to run through another business that he was director of. Yeah, I realise now that I'm saying it out loud that that does sound maybe kind of dodgy. Long story short, we did all of that work and he was very, very pleased with it. So pleased, in fact, that he actually asked us if we were still going to be working for him several months after he'd failed to pay us. That would be a no. He made one payment, but then just, you know, stopped. And instead of receiving the rest of the money we were owed, we just got a whole lot of excuses. Actually, you should feel really sorry for me because I've been really, really ill. Not like in hospital or anything, so don't check. Like, but I have been really, really unwell. So I haven't been in the office. And no, 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 no. I'm not feeling better, but I am feeling better because I'm back at work now. But no, 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 I'm not better because I'm not actually physically unwell. It's in my mind, I'm really suffering. And don't you realize what a big deal mental health is these days? Everybody else has realized it. Everybody else has said to me, you don't have to pay any of your bills because they're nice people. People. You're not nice people. And anyway, I can't pay for anything because my dog ate my bank card. And I don't even have a dog. It was at this point that we decided to go to small claims court. And late last year, we won! Oh yeah, I know, this sounds great. It's not the end of the story. Now how it works here in the UK is if you apply to small claims court and say I'm owed this money, the court will send your debtor a letter and they will then have a period of time from memory, I've got a feeling it's like 28 or 30 days but don't quote me on that. They will send them this letter and it will say you have this many days to get in touch with us to dispute that you owe this money and you've also got this many days to get in touch with us to say I don't dispute that I owe the money but I can't afford to pay it and if you do either of those things then we will deal with where we proceed from here but this ridiculous pustule on the face of humanity didn't bother replying to the court all he did was go la 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 and because of that, at the end of November, we had a letter from the court telling us that because he hadn't bothered getting in touch with them, they had automatically found in our favour. Hooray! Now, if you're unfamiliar with how this process works, a county court judgment stays on your credit record, not for a week or a month or even a year, for six years. That's any time you try and take out a loan or get a mortgage, they're gonna look at your credit record and go, ooh, you don't pay your debts, no. The caveat to that is if you pay your debt in full within one month of receiving the CCJ, that's county court judgment, it gets a bit wordy otherwise, then it goes off your records and it's not traceable. It doesn't go into any files anywhere. Nobody knows it ever happened. It is erased from existence. Now, because this absolute piece of excrement clearly knew this, he sent us an email that said, Fine, I don't want this on my record for six years, so you can expect that it will be paid in full within one month. <laughs> it wasn't. When he, yet again, failed to pay us a single penny within a month of the CCJ being issued, 
we obviously did the sensible thing and looked further into our legal options. We could try to enforce the judgment, which is basically a way of saying that you go to court, he has to come to court and he has to show proof of his income and his savings, etc. The judge will then go, I think you can afford to pay this much per month and I'm going to say that you have to do that. Now, there are two problems with this. Firstly, we would have to pay for that court appearance. We would have to pay all the legal fees up front. It would be added onto what he owes us, but then comes the second problem, because he could stand up in court and say to the judge, Who, me? Oh, governor, I've only got five British pounds to my name. I'm as poor as a church mouse, me. And then the judge would put him on some kind of very minimal monthly payment, which he has technically got an obligation to stick to, but we know by now he wouldn't. And that would mean we would have paid out more money just to still not get anything. Our other option was to send bailiffs round, but this was really risky because the debt was owed by his business technically and not him personally which meant that we could, again, be spending money to send the bailiffs out, only for them to return with nothing. And if bailiffs return with nothing, they add on another fee. So we could be spending quite a few hundred quid to get back absolutely nothing. Besides which, he decided to claim, right, well, do you know what? My business has no money in its account and I miraculously run a business with no assets whatsoever. So you're going to have to agree to a payment plan on my terms. Yes, this person really is the embodiment of a cup of cold sick. Bearing in mind that this was all taking place in late December, he told us that he wanted to agree to a payment plan of three months that would start in February. For some reason, the month of January just poof, disappeared. Why did he want it to start in February? Well, if I'm being charitable, I could say it was so he could build up some cash after Christmas and he'd have enough to pay his first instalment. But I'm not going to be charitable to this absolute infected genital wart. He was just a horrible person who wanted to call the shots. But with no money to use to take him to court or do any further legal action, we had no option other than to say, sure, we'll look forward to your first payment in February. Fast forward to February and we sent him a reminder email a week before his first payment was due, along with an invoice detailing the amount he owed over the next three months, which he had proposed. We didn't say to him, you've got three months and you're gonna pay this much each month. He said, I can do it if you let me do it over three months. Then the day arrived when his first payment should have gone into our bank account and it didn't. <laughs> emailed him and as he has done throughout this entire process this little ingrown pubic hair just decided to ignore us. Then an acquaintance suggested that we might want to get in touch with a debt collector. So we emailed this guy and he told us about something called a third party debt order. Now this sounded really good because what happens with a third party debt order is you, the third party, get in touch with the court and say, okay, we have a judgment against this person. He has promised over and over and over to pay us. He's not paid us a penny. And the court contacts their bank and goes, freeze their accounts. Once the accounts are frozen, they take the amount that you are owed out of the account, if there's enough in there to do that, and they put it directly in your bank account and then magically unfreeze it all over again. Basically, as long as his business account had around £2,000 in it, it would mean we got every penny we were owed and there would be nothing he could do to stop it. There was just one small catch and we didn't think this would apply to us because it was just a tiny, tiny little thing, a loophole that of course wasn't going to apply in this situation. You can only get 
a third party debt order if the person who owes you money is a resident of England or Wales. And he is. Woohoo! Oh, and their bank account had to be registered in England or Wales too. And his is registered in Scotland. Of course it is, you festering lump of rancid snot! So we contacted another debt collector just in case they had any different advice and that's when we found out what we had long suspected to be true from the very, very beginning of this sorry situation. Because when this debt collector phoned us, he basically told us, I know this guy, I have multiple clients trying to get money out of him, he is not a nice person. He has nine county court judgments against his various businesses. Nine. Nine. This festering puddle of cat vomit owes thousands and thousands to individuals and small businesses all over the place. And he is just sitting pretty knowing he's gone through all these little legal loopholes to ensure nobody can get the money he owes them. And he is just ripping people off left, right and centre. Look, I am not a vengeful person, but I hope your penis gets gangrene and falls off in the most painful way possible. And so here we are, and believe me, the only reason I am not telling you this cancerous polyp's full name and the names of all of his businesses is because he is such subhuman scum that I'm pretty certain he'd try to sue me for libel if I did that, even though everything I'm saying here is true. <coughs> if I seem kind of angry, it's because I am. I'm not just angry, I'm really upset. Now, full disclosure, I lost a friend recently. She was a badass. She was such a lovely person. She was funny and she was kind and she was thoughtful and she should have had years and years and years left on this planet. And the fact that she has gone and he is still walking around ripping off people, that makes me really incandescent with rage. In my fantasies, I would like to sue this person because one other thing that we were told we could do is try to transfer the CCJ from his business name to his individual name. The only issue with that is you have to be sure that he either owns property or a car or lots of electronics because otherwise bailiffs will just go to his house and be unable to take anything and you're left foot in the bill. But knowing that there are at least eight other people out there or organisations out there who are owed lots of money by this cretin makes me think we should all band together and sue his ass. I don't know if anyone watching this is a pro bono solicitor, but I will happily take this video down if you would like to represent us while we sue him. Please write me a comment. What I genuinely want to know is why do people like this exist? And why does the legal system in this country seem determined to let them exist? Whilst all the small businesses and individuals he has screwed over are struggling. I am struggling. And I think we, as in me and Leslie, and all of these other individuals or small businesses have been royally screwed over by him. Have you ever encountered somebody like this? Did you ever get back what you were owed? If you did, please tell me in the comments, make me feel a little bit better. If you enjoyed my misery, please feel free to give this video a thumbs up. You can click on my floaty head if you'd like to subscribe and you can watch last week's video over there. I need to redo my nails, so I'm gonna go and focus on that and do something chill. Take care everyone and do not trust horrible, 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 horrible con artists. Bye.